This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Baruch HaMavon, welcome everyone. Incredibly, we return back to the Navi Hoshea. We're up to Parak Gimel. We begin and uh, return to the words of the prophets. Shadavar Echad Midivrehem Achar Lo Yashavrekam that every single word the Yivan Hashem will bring to fruition. So we're up to Paragimel, Pasuk Aleph. Vayemer Hashem Eli, and God said to me, Oid, again. Again, meaning, this is not the first time Hashem is telling Hashem to take a woman, um, a promiscuous woman, a Zaina, and have a relation with her, have a relationship with her. Um, we already had this in Parak Aleph. And if you remember in Parak Aleph, there were three different interpretations as to whether this indeed actually took place or not. The opinion in Parak Aleph of the Targum was that this never took place, but rather it was allegorical, because the God would t- tell a prophet to live with a Zaina. It can't be. The Targum said... Um, in the beginning of Hoshea, the Targum said, Shiroyus Peskama Dasham Bashev Amar Hashem Loshe Ezel is Nabe Nevua Al Yosve Karta Ta'avasa. That's not what the Pasuk says. <laughs> the Pasuk says, Vayim Hashem Loshe Lech Kachlecha Isha Zenunim. The Yalde Zenunim. The words are, take a harlot and have children out of that relationships, but a relationship, but the Targum says prophecy on the sinful city the Inon Moisif and Lamechte because they continue to sin. So according to Targum, this is not literal at all. It's completely allegorical. Uh, other Mepharshim in Perak Aleph the Ibn Ezra, the Malbim and the Radak, that it was an actual command it was not allegorical um, but rather, it took place in a prophecy. So he didn't actually live with her, but in his nevuah he lived with her. He didn't actually bear, she didn't bear children to him, but in the prophecy she did. So it's not a mashal, it, it, that was the prophecy, but it, it was only in the realm of prophecy. So for example, the... Ibn Ezra, uh, in the beginning of uh, Parak Aleph, Ibn Ezra says, find it. The Ibn Ezra learns that this was just a, this was a prophecy. Noam Avram HaMachaber, Chalila, Chalila, Sheitzav HaShem Lakachas Isha Zanunim, Lohoyled Yadi Zanunim, Kiznus meachre Hashem derech Moshal, v'anochen be'inai says the Ibn Ezra, kizeh hanovi hoyoraya b'maros nevua b'chaloim halayla shahashem amar loy leich kach lecha eishes zenunim v'halach v'lokach isha yedua v'haros v'yoda kol zeh b'maros hanevua says the Ibn Ezra. But isn't nevua prophecy is something that's going to happen in the future? Isn't that what nevua is? So typically Navu is God communicating to the Navi to tell the people what will be. But sometimes Navu is just a some type of divine communication. In this case being Hashem sending Hashem a message. The message was, if you remember, the Gemara tells us that Hashem came to Hashem and He said, Hashem, your children have sinned. Now the correct spot response, this is the Gemara M'sachem and Daf Pezayin, the correct response should have been, we mean my children sin, your children, God sin, your beloved children sin. Instead, Hashem responded, he said, look, the whole world is yours, so then exchange them for another people. So, you know, get your money, cash back guarantee. Trade them in. Trade them in. You know, if you don't like it, especially nowadays, you know, it's full, they're fully refundable. So, because he responded that way, God was sending him a message, really? It's so easy just to send away somebody who, uh, even a wife who's unfaithful to you, or even a harlot who you have a relationship with, very hard to send her away. 
So that, that was the purpose of the prophecy. In other words, God w- was predicting something to Hashem. He was telling him, we c- I can't send away these people. But the purpose of the prophecy was for a message for the future, but not that that scenario actually played out. That was the opinion of the Ibn Ezra and the Malbim. And there was a third opinion. And the third opinion was the al that they actually took place. He did do that. Those events took place. In fact, back in Parak Aleph, the Abarbanel agrees with that in Parak Aleph. The, the Abarbanel in Parak Aleph argued on the Ibn Ezra. He said, Ein If the Navi says that Hashem tells Hashem to live with a harlot, then he means live with a harlot. And you can't say that it just took place in a Nebuah. The question is, and, and the Gemara seems to say that, the Gemara M'sachem Adaf Pezayin says very literally, Hoshea went and married the harlot. Her name was Goimer. And she, and she bore him two sons. And that's the opinion of Rashi. So Barbanel explains, what about the fact, how could a Navi do such a despicable, degrading thing as to live with a harlot? And the Barbanel learns, this is one of the many instances we find where the leaders of Kal Yisrael sacrifice not only their physical welfare, but even their own spiritual levels to do what Hashem asked them to do as a Hayra The same way Elio Anavi on Hara Carmel uh, brought a Karbanois outside of the Beis which was not permitted. But as a Hayra God told them to do it. Now if a Navi comes and says, you never have to wear tefillin, so we kill the Navi. If a Navi comes and says, you, you could, from now on, bacon is the official you know, Shabbos morning menu of the Jewish people, you kill the Navi. But if a Navi, who's already uh, authenticated as a Navi, comes and says, God told me as a Hayra this Shabbos by the Kiddush, we have to have bacon, then you do listen to the Navi. Now, it has to be an authentic Navi. That means, you know, he has all the qualities and the characteristics and the, the personality traits and the Tzidkos and the Kedusha. And he's already proven himself as a Navi. Then as a Hayra Shav, he tells you to do an Avera, you, you listen to him. And in this case, the Abarbanel defended Chazal and Rashi that, uh, in fact, Hashem told Hoshea to live with the Zayna. But now this is the second time he's doing it. And we're going to see, we, we'll have all three opinions again, but on this time around, some of the Mepharshim are going to change their stance. So all three Perushim will exist, but not the same names will hold. We'll see. So the Pasuk again said, Hashem said to me, Oid, again, Lech Ehav Isha, go love a woman. Doesn't say marry her. Ahuvas Rea, the love of a friend, meaning beloved of her friend. Umino Afes, and an adulteress. So go take a woman who you love, but who's an adulteress, who's not going to be faithful to you. Ka'avas Hashem es B'nei Yisrael. This is analogous to the love of God to the Jewish people. God is the groom, the Jewish people are the bride, and we're unfaithful, we're promiscuous. For example, when God took us out of Mitzrayim and He married us, so to speak, remember we had the share before Pesach and you know, the, before we eat the matzah, there's a Shavu Rachai, so God married us. And, so to speak, the chuppah was on Har Sinai. And at the chuppah, you know, like the most despicable thing in the world, is if a kala, you're looking for under the chuppah, and uh, where is she? She'll be right back. She just had to go be mazana quickly, but she'll be back in no time. Where is she? She's in the Yichud room now. With who? Not the chassans under the chuppah. She's with somebody else. So, Kala Yisrael, at the chuppah, at Har Sinai, we're busy making the egal. In fact, the Gemara says, Aluva, the Gemara Gitan says, Aluva Kala, Shizen Satachas Chupasa. Despicable is the Kala that um, is Mazana under the Chupa. So Hashem says, This is a love of me to the Jewish people. Vehim Painim, I loved her, and they turn El Elohim Achirim to other gods. Vehoi have, and they love Ashishayanovim, goblets of grapes. So what does this mean? Let's see Rashi. Ahuvas Reya, take a woman who's beloved to her husband, Chaviva Abayla, beloved to her husband, Ve'ahuvaloi, and endeared to him, Ve'hi mina'ef es tachtov, and she 
commits adultery under his auspices, Ka'avas HaKadosh Baruch Yisrael. Like when God loves us, Behim Zoyinim at and we stray from Him, Elohim Achirim, to other gods. And instead we love goblets of grapes, says Rashi, Ashishay Anavim, Perish Menachem. Menachem interprets it, Gevie Yayin, goblets of grapes. Oyavim, we love, Lehishtak Yer Beyeinam, to become drunk with wine, Veinam Oiskim Atayra. And we are not Oisek in Tyra. Interesting Rashi. What does it mean to stray away from God? What does it mean to be promiscuous with God? What does it mean not to be faithful to God? Doesn't even, it doesn't mean we did any Avera even. It's just indulging and not being Oisek in Tyra. Maybe, maybe it does mean we did something wrong. It doesn't say just from Rashtaka. Their wine. Their wine. Yeah. Okay, what was their wine? Yain you mean? Yeah. yeah. Why would you put in the word Biyenam otherwise? I mean, he specifically says their wine. Okay. So it means Avoy de Zara wine. <clears throat> but what's he throwing in? Ve'enam oiskem You know, if it means we believed in other gods, it sounds like the the... The fait accompli, the, the final blow, or at least the sinful act, was lack of in- involvement in learning Torah. Okay, whether the wine itself was inherently wrong or because what it brought them to, the analogy is God tells Hosea, take a, an adulterer, and that's what the Jewish people are to me. So let's see whether this actually happened or just a prophecy. The Targum here says, Go prophecy about the Jewish people. They are similar to a woman. Who is beloved to her husband. And despite this, Rachim La. He loves her, but he doesn't want to get rid of her. Likewise, God loves us. And yet we stray after other gods. However, according to Targum, This is a nevuah. This is a prophecy, like the Targum says in Parak Aleph. Ibn Ezra learns by Yomer Bederach Nevuah. Meaning, this did not actually occur, but it occurred through a prophecy. The Malbim learns one of the differences between the two times that Hashem told Hashem to take the woman. If you look in the Malbim, the Malbim says, Achar Hamashal Harishain, Shehim Shal Asisrak Keishas Ish, Hazayna Mitach Hazbaila. The second command is just lech ehav isha. Take a uh, go love a woman. This time you're not going to marry her. That you took with marriage. It's not going to be Eishas Ish that Zayna Tachas Baila. This time it's going to be a Pnuya, basically a girlfriend. That's what the Mabu learns. She'ein la ba'al badarach nesun, rak yesh la reya, shehi ahuva mimenu b'yoyser. A very dear friend. V'hi mina efes be'ed esnan, gama anashem acherim, ba'ad esnan gama anashem acherim, chutz mina reya. Now she's not a zoyna because she doesn't have a ba'al. But what is she? She's a traitor. Right? In other words, you know, this is not something that's done, but even a woman who is a friend of a man, who has a relationship with a man, if she then is 
goes with others, she would be considered a boygade. Now, so what's the point of the second mashal here? The Malbim says this is another mashal. This is a mashal of Klal Yisrael after the Galos. After, after we're in Galos, Hashem sent us away. And in a way, we're like not married to God anymore. So once, you know, God got rid of us, we're not married to Him anymore. Because He says, Loi Amiata. So us and God, what's our relationship with God? He ain't our husband, He's our boyfriend. So uh, the Jewish people and God, that's the analogy the Malvin learns. Sorry to use such... Uh, Maybe profane language, but you know that's what he's. Th- that's what the Malvin learns. But he's our friend. Even though he doesn't love us like a husband, he loves us like a friend. Meaning, what does that mean? Now, obviously, our relationship with God never terminated. Chas v'shalom. But the Malvin explains that even though his love for us is not open with mir- miracles, but he's sort of behind the scenes. And through the veil of a curtain. In other words, yes, we are still bound with God. But instead of Him showing obvious relationship with us and walking with us before Hesya, He does so from behind the scenes. And this is a relationship that Hashem has with Kal Yisrael. Now what's this business with us loving wine? That we love the goblets of wine, the Malbim interprets on the fourth wide line. That we're not on the Madriga, we're not as bad any, as, as we were before, where the husband would provide the wife with Mazoinois, and she thought she would attribute this sustenance to um, the lovers. But now, Begolos, we don't have any set sustenance. Not from God. And not from our lovers. But what we are is like we have this relationship with God as our friend. And for just a cup of wine and for small benefits, we're ready to forsake Him. Okay. Um, Be it as it may. So the Malbum learns that this is a took place in a Nevuah. In other words, it's not just an allegory, but it took place in a Nevuah. The Aushech, on, on the other hand, learns that this actually took place. Now we mentioned earlier that the Abarbanel and Perak Aleph, the Abarbanel and Perak Aleph uh, rejected the the Ibn Ezra. The Ibn Ezra said that it only took place in a Nevuah, and the Abarbanel says no, it had to actually have taken place in Mikro Yotzimidei Pshutai. But interestingly, the Abarbanel in Paragimel, he says that you could say. He says that you could say that it only took place in a Nevuah and it didn't have to actually take place. The Abba Arbanel says, Kifi derech yoinasan, hinei tiyah ha-nevuah azo, is gam kein mashal. It's a mashal. But not that it actually took place. Now the opinion of the Ibn Ezra is that Shaniraloi calls of Marahanavua. Now says the Abarbanel, we could accept their opinion on this matter. Maybe that's why it says Bayomashamelai Vaechrali. Different than it says in Parak Aleph. Why? If you look in Parak Aleph, what does the Navi say? In the beginning it says, Vayelach Pasukimo, Vayikach as Goimer Bas Devloyim, he went and he took Goimer, the daughter of Devloyim, and she had a son. There it says, he did this. So if it says that he did it, we have to take it at face value that he did it. But it in other words, that's a thir- third person? He. Yeah. In this parak, 
it says, Ekrehali, I did it. What's that? First person, right? So that, maybe it didn't actually happen, but the Navi is saying, this is what I did in my Nebuah. So the Barbanel is of the opinion that Perak Aleph may have just been, well, Perak Aleph must have actually taken place, Perak Gimel could just be what he saw in his Nebuah. Okay. Let's continue. Now, this is very interesting, and that's... Last night I wasn't sure what we should... Uh, whether we continue with the Gemara, or maybe last year, at this time of the year, we did Rus with the Malbim. So I was thinking of doing um, Rus with a different parish. The only problem was that parish doesn't exist. So that really was the clincher, <laughs> why I decided not to do it. I thought there was a certain parish on uh, Rus. It's up to you to write your own parish. Now we can yeah, learn right. Um... Anyway, let's look at this Pasuk. This Pasuk where it was the clencher. Va'ekerehali. And I bought her to me. So God's talking. I bought her. That's God has bought us. Bachamisha asar kasef. With 15 silver pieces. V'choymer sa'irim. And a choymer of barley. A choymer is 30 sa. Or 10 efa. Vilesech and a lesech. A lesech is five efa, which is fifteen sa sa'irim of barley. So, how much did God buy us for? Fifteen silver pieces and a choymer of sa'irim, which is thirty sa, or ten efa. Vilesech sa'irim, which is fifteen sa, or five efa. Okay, an amazing Rashi here. The Ekra Ali Rashi says a language of business. Like in Barashas Asher Karisili. The Chamisha Asar Kasef, the Choymer Soirim, the Lesach Soirim. Tergem Yainasan, look at Targum. Ufraktinon, the Mamri, and I redeem them with my word. Beyoim Chamsha Asar on the 15th day of the month. Not with 15 silver pieces. On, with, on the 15th day of the month, which month? Oh, Nisan. Nisan! How do we know Nisan? The gematria of Kasef is the same gematria as Nisan. Kasef is 160. Nisan, without the Yud, is 160. Yos Kesaf Taklaya Kippur Lenaf Shehoin. And I commanded them. He gave money of silver to atone for them. The Amaras Dihoin, and I told them and I told them Makarvin Kodamai Oimer they should be makar before me the Oimer Aramusa Ma'alas sa'irim from barley. Kolaymer loy hoigatim medvarim kashim. I gave them, I, I made it easy on them. All I wanted them to do and to be, to bring before me was an oimer of barley. Rashi says, V'chamish asar kesef begamat shayar nisan. U'psikta hu nidrash, and then the psikta they darshan, B'tesvav kesef, B'tesvav benisan, Na'ah. Now here's the beautiful thing here. You ready for this? 30 sa. What's 30 sa? From the 15th day of Nisan to the 15th day of Iyar, 30 days. What's the significance of the 30 days? What fell on the 15th day of Iyar? The man. The man was how much? Oimer sa'irem, an oimer of barley. So the th- so let's read the Pasuk again. For Ekreli, I bought her for me, Bachamisha Asar, on the 15th of Nisan. Kasef is Nisan. V'choymer sa'irim, in another 30 days, I purchased her with 30 days worth of man. V'lesach sa'irim, in another, a lesach is 15 sa, another 15 days. That takes to till Rosh Chaydash Sivan. The chuppah is getting rather close here. 15, starting in the 15th day of Nisan, 30 days until the 15th day of Iyar, another 15 days until Rosh Chaydash Sivan. Pretty amazing.
Look at the Radak. The Radak says that these 15 The Radak says him gam kein tesvav So, in other words, uh, one way to read the Pasuk differently than what we learned at first, Chamish Asr Kasa, that's 15. A Choymer is 10 Eifa, and a Lesach is 5 Eifa, that's another 15. Who are the 15? Moshe, Aaron, Miriam, and the 12 Shvatim. Another Pshat, he quotes, like the Targum, the Chamish Asr Kasa is the 15th of Nisan, the days from when we left Mitzrayim until we came to Midbar Sinai and we were in Kabbalah the Torah. Because the Choymer is 30 sun, Alasach is 15. 45 days. Why barley? Because most of the people that left Mitzrayim, they were like behemoths, like a horse, like a ferret. They had a slave mentality. Okay. Va'oimare leha. And then I said to her, I need two batteries. Va'oimare leha. And I said to her, over here. Va'oimare leha. And I said to her, Yamim rabim. Many days, teishvili. Sit with me. Loi tizni. Do not be mezanev. Loi siya leish. Do not be to a man. Vegamani eloyach. I will be, I will be to you as well, so Hashem said that you, for many days, sit with me, do not be mazana, do not be to any other man, and I'll be for you as well. So, um, I will be to you as well. Fine. So, what does this mean, Yamim Rabim? Now, Yamim is usually two days, and Rabim is another three days. Yamim is a minimum two days, and Rabim is usually a minimum three days. So that, we already started from Rosh Chodesh Sivan, so two days, and another three days. So now you're ready, up to the Chasana. It says Rashi, Yamim Shnayim Rabim Shloisha Harei Chamisha Ilu Nun Yom Shabin Pesach La'atzeres Boi Biyom Nasati Lohem HaToyra Uba Hizartiya and in the Torah, I warned her, do not be mazana. Where did I warn her not to be mazana? Lo yia lecha Elohim achirim. Do not have any other gods. Begam ani Eloyach, and I will be for you as well. How? Anoichi Hashem leikacha. Ba'asher osa shnei cheshboinois. Why are we breaking it up into different numbers? 30, 15, 5. You know, 30, 15, and 5, just say 50. Why are we cutting it into different numbers? So Rashi says, Okay. Another interesting shot that Rashi says over here it says Rashi um Rav Hai Matsasi Dover Hagan. I found something nice from Rav Hai going Vaechra Ali and I bought it for me. Hashem was Katsav the Dumim of Koifer opposite me with a small amount. In other words, somebody who says Erech Nafshi Alai from sixty and up, so the Erech is fifteen shekel. The Chaimer Sa'irim is what? 30. Eirech Zachar, Midan Esam Shanam Allah, Viyad Ben Samach, Chamishim Shekel. Vem Demei Pidyan Chaimer Sa'irim. The redemption of a Chaimer of barley is also uh, 50 Shekel. And a Lesach Sa'irim is the Demei Pidyan of Karka for the Beis Hamikdash. 25 shekel, that's the value of somebody from 5 until 20. Okay, interesting. So the Psukim continue, Pasuk Dalad. Ki yamim rabim, for many days. 
Now again, according to the Malbam, the second mashal refers to our relationship with God, not in our first time around when we were married to Him, but the second time around in Galos. Ki yamim rabim, for many days, Yeshu b'nei Yisrael, Klal Yisrael will dwell Ein melech, without a king. V'yein sar, without an officer. V'yein zavach, without karbonois. V'yein matseva, without a monument. V'yein ephoid, without an ephoid. V'yein shrafim. Without serving idols as well. Let's see, Ra- let's see Rashi. Rashi says nothing. Okay, let's not see Rashi. Let's see the Mitsudas David. Mitsudas David says, Now, this alludes to the fact that many days Kali Yisrael will be in Golos, being Mitzapah for the Geula. And Hashem will be Mitzapah to take them as a people, even during the, their Golos. And with, throughout our Golos, we won't have a king. But also, we're not going to have a sar, meaning we're not going to worship any of the angels on high. Like a woman separated from her husband, and yet does not live with any other men. And even though we're not going to have a, a Beis HaMikdash, and a, we're not going to have Karbanais, we're not going to make a Matseva. Meaning, despite the fact we don't have a real king, we're not going to accept any of the angels on high. Despite the fact we don't have karvanos, we're not going to make a matseva and offer in a foreign place, says him to this David. Vein eifoid utrafim. Meaning, even though we're not going to have an urim v'tuim to ask questions, still, we're not going to ask any um, witchcraft, we're not going to ask any superstitious sources to find out the future. Okay, so this is a prophecy that despite everything we're missing in the Galos, we never lose our grip on our faith to the Rebbe Nishalayim. Achar, and after that, Yashuvu B'nai Yisrael. The B'nai Yisrael will return. Uvikshu es Hashem Aleikeyem. And seek out Hashem, their God. V'yes David Malcolm and David their king. Ufachadu el Hashem, they will tremble before God, be el Tuvai, and for his goodness, be Achras Hayamim at the end of days. To me personally, this is a very moving Pasuk. Because you know, the Pasuk says we're gonna seek out God. What do you mean we're gonna seek out King David? Well, you need King David, we have God. Why do you need King David? We're gonna seek out Malchus based of it. Don't uh once we seek God, isn't that enough? We're going to seek out Machos Beis David. Also we say, we're going to be afraid of Hashem's goodness. You know, well, you know you're afraid of punishment. What do you mean we're afraid of His goodness? So he brings down that there's a Medrash in Bereshus Rabbah Memches Zion that a, a thief rebelled against the king. So the king says, whoever captures him will be rewarded. So one person captured him, and the king said to his guards, take both of them overnight, guard both of them. So that night they were both trembling. The thief was trembling over the impending punishment. And the one who captured him was also trembling in excitement of the upcoming reward. So too the Jewish people will be trembling in anticipation of the tremendous time that is in store for us in the future. But there's another incredible medrash here. The medrash says like this, Rav Shem said that Klai Yisrael despised three things in the times of Rechava. Malchus Shamayim, Malchus Beis David, Beis HaMikdash. So, the, the simon of Geula will not be until they return and re-seek all of them. As the Pasuk says, we'll seek Hashem Lekeyem, we'll seek David Malcolm. And we'll seek Hashem yes Tuvai. That's the base Hamikdash, like the Pasuk says Ha'ar um Ha It says Ha'ar Ha Toiv Hazah Mahalavanoi. Toiv refers to the base Hamikdash. So too the Malbum says 
we will be trembling that God restore His goodness to Tzion, which is the Beis HaMikdash. And that will be last. For example, if you look in the Gemara in Sanhedrin and Dav Chafalef, what's the order? We're going to make a Melech, we're going to destroy Amalek, and then we're going to build the Beis HaMikdash. We once said many times that in the story of Purim, that um, it says that Mordechai minted coins and he acted as a Melech and... You know, why was it so important for him to be acting like a melech? Because the process of Geula is first you appoint a melech, then you destroy Amalek, and then you build a base of Mikdash. Hamadas Hamelech is Keser Malchus. Destroying Amalek is Hashem's Malchus is complete. And then the Torah will be complete, which is uh, the Binyan Beis Abchira. Um... which restores the Keser Kahuna. So there's a very, very moving uh, Abar on this uh, last Pasuk here in Parak Gimel. Hopefully we could find it. Hope it's not too moving and it did not move away. Okay. So it says, the Holy Abar Says Abar That the Soif Hagalos Klal Yisrael will return and seek out Hashem and David. They will regret the the separation of hearts that was between them. They will seek out Hashem. That at first they will have Mashiach ben Ephraim to fight their enemies. He will die and then Klaisa will seek out Malchus based David from the Geza Yishai. Ah, oh, you ready for this? Let me point out something to you. Do you remember when who built the first base of Mikdash? Shlomo. Shlomo, who you've not biased Lashmi. At the very same time that he built the first base of Mikdash, he built his palace. Was the Shekhinah present in the first base of Mikdash? Absolutely. Was the Shekhinah present in the times of the second base of Mikdash? No. What else didn't we have in the times of the second base of Mikdash? Malchus based David. Says Abar Benel, being Mikabel o Malchus Shamayim goes hand in hand with being Mikabel Malchus based David. Therefore, the reason why the Shekhinah was present in the time of the first base of Mikdash is because the Malchus based David was firmly established. Shalom al-Malch was a king and he had a throne. During the times of the second base of Mikdash, there was no Malchus based David, there was no throne for the king. God was not in the base of Mikdash either. They go hand in hand. You can't have Kabbalah's or Malchus Shemayim without Malchus based David. I'm going to read to you the words and then I'm going to explain what I think the reason is. He says, says the Abarbanel, He iru bezel l'soid al Chazal are inspiring us uh, to a great secret. One of the wonders of the perfect of knowledge. The house of David was near the house of God. The, the reign of David was close in concept to the reign of God Himself. Therefore Shlomo built simultaneously the house of God and the house of the Melech. When Yishalayim was destroyed, Nemar v'yisroif es beis Hashem es beis ha-melech. They burnt the house of God and the house of the King. And it's no wonder then that when the Shvatim cast away the Malchus of Beis David, that's when they cast away Malchus Shamayim and they worship the Egal. They thought this was just a political figurehead. No, historically, as soon as they split off from David, they threw away Hashem. God wasn't there. So that's the meaning of the Pasuk. 
then Klal Yisrael will return. Seek out God. How? By seeking out David HaMelech. So the question is, what does David HaMelech got to do with God? Well, God needs David HaMelech, you know. God is a... Uh, he doesn't need anybody. What's the concept? concept is like this. God needs a throne. He needs a kise. Who, what's the kise of Hashem? Well, Chazal tell us there are four legs. Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. The thing is, a chair to be sturdy needs a fourth leg. What's the fourth leg? Shevet Yehuda, Malchus, based David. That's why when Yehuda was born, the Pasuk says, Vata Amoid Miledes, a lashon of Amida. Now God is firm. That's why David comes from Shevet Yehuda. What's Shevet Yehuda? Yehuda is Yud Kevavke plus a Dalid. Dalid represents the fourth leg that holds up the throne of Hashem. And therefore, the soon, that's why we say, David, that's why we say in Benching, Rachim Na Hashem Lekena, Yisrael Amecha, Hashem Yirecha, the Altsioi Mishkan Kvaidecha, she can't have a bias of HaKadosh without Malchus based on it. So Taka, we should be Zoycha to see as Tzemach David Avdecha Mehera Satzmiach the Karnoi Torum Vishwasecha Ki Vishwascha Kibinu Kalyam. Have a great day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.